What is going on, everybody? Guys, if you like Bitcoin, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell to be notified of future content. We're going to talk about what is going on in this crypto market right now. There is a big dip happening on Bitcoin, but let's not act like everything is just falling away because, listen, there's no real situation in which Bitcoin has fallen off of a cliff. What we've seen really is just a little bit of a move to the downside that might be picked up by a very important line. And if you follow Bitcoin for any length of time, you know how important this line is. Uh, you know how important it is for the closing here uh, because it really kind of symbolizes that the, uh, that the, 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 not that the bottom is in, but that we've reached this point where we can let the past be in the past. And let's go over and let's look at it right now. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I hope uh, that you, I hope that you guys can see all of this as we do it. Now, uh, first of all, you can see the Bitcoin price right here. We're going to move to the hour chart to look at this. Uh, there's been a move to this downside, and we are now seeing this uh, uh, this kind of consolidation right above uh, this little line. Now, why is this line important? Well, it's important because this is the line that led to the collapse of FTX. You can see that right here. This is the days leading up to the FTX collapse. This is when it fell off the cliff. So when you're looking at that right now, that's at least the minimum line that you want to see. So what we are witnessing right now is that move to that uh, uh, to that downside, catching this as support, and we need that level of support to maintain. Now, uh, you might be curious what we're doing over here. This is the 50-day uh SMA and this is the 200 day SMA. I've got one in green, one in blue. Now, uh, it might seem opposite to you, but I like blue. So uh, humor me. Uh, so we've crossed over and then immediately when you see a golden cross happen, uh, immediately we see this gigantic dip over here. <clears throat> now, and I know that you're probably thinking like, why is that happening? Because every time uh, we hear about the Golden Cross, we hear about how great the market is and how everything uh, is just going to be peaches and cream and rosy. Uh, and, and it just doesn't work out that way. And it's never worked out that way, even though in the long term, it does kind of signal a certain few um, things that will lead to a big move to the upside. Now, uh, it, this second yellow line that we've got right here, this is the Fed. Uh, doing the CPI announcement. That's going to be on February 14th, Valentine's Day. So uh, make sure that you're tuned into what's going on at that time. And also, let's go over here and let's talk about, this was the last crossover, uh, but this was not what we're going to be talking about over here. We're going to be talking about, this was the last time we got a golden cross. This over here was a death cross. Uh, the golden cross happened over here, and we can see it happen here September 14th of 2021. I think most of you probably remember that because it was a nice big run up and it was that final blow off top, really institutional sort of money. If you ever look at your RSIs, it was really kind of institutional money that was pumping the market uh, to insane levels. And hey, you know what? We were all there for it and we all made a little bit of money off of it. But here is the cross coming over and what immediately happens. You see this massive drawdown, then this massive consolidation before this move to the upside. Now, uh, the question becomes, how long did that take? Well, we're on day chart, so you're looking at about two weeks. And after about two weeks of downside movement from the Golden Cross confirmation, we started to take off. So it seems reasonable to consider that we've got about two weeks to spare before something like this starts to happen. Now, if we see something like that happen, then I think that everybody here is going to feel super good about their position, uh, especially let's say the Golden Cross happens right here and we get our top up over here. Uh, let's go look at that top and see exactly where it fell right there. That gave us a 51% relief on our rally. And if you want to see another 50% from right now, then that's what happened the last time. But let's go back here and let's continue on our little journey here uh, to where this happened. Now, there's two spots where this happened. Uh, this is February 18 of 2020 and then May 20 of 2020. Now, uh, there's an irony here. Uh, but this right here, you see, this is where the cross happens at this point, And immediately we see another crash. Now, at, at this point, I, I know you might be thinking like, well, you, you just showed me that it just went absolutely crazy from here. And I'm not using this right here. But I'm just using this part right here and showing you, well, you know, this is what happened. Well, the, the, what happened here is it started the rally and then COVID shutdowns happened. That's what happened right here. And then right after the COVID shutdowns, then 
uh, you know, government started pumping money to people. And the next thing you know, we were off to the races and you see this flipped and it went from the golden cross back to back, back to the death cross. Uh, then it started to move down here really bad and you could see it. And then all of a sudden it took back off. And then you got that second little level. Well, at that second little level, uh, you may be surprised to learn that we got it right here and then immediately dumped down. Now, when you look at it right now, you probably don't see uh, a, a huge amount of downside, but let's really be honest about where we went. Uh, we were down 11% in that period of time. And as soon as we got the cross over here, uh, you can actually take a look and you can see, like, where do we go immediately? We went down 17% right there. Again, you know, this payoff on this run up, we ended up at two point, I think it was $2.3 trillion at, at this point on this big run. So, um, you know, that's what happens every single time. Then, of course, we got over here because, you know, it never ends, right? It, it never, never ends. Uh, the next thing we got is on Monday, uh, the 22nd of April of 2019. And what do you see right here? We see the, the crossover. We see a minor little pump. And then we see just an absolute dump again on the price action. Not sustained for a very long time. But let's go take a look at what this number is. And you can see right here about a 15% dump. So a 15% dump on the Bitcoin price in this very short period of time, just after the golden cross, before we get this tremendous sort of upside move. So uh, you might ask yourself, what is going on right there? Well, you know, the, the markets, look, the markets are kind of easy, um, uh, not necessarily to predict, but it, they're kind of easy to read when you're looking at the past. And it's kind of easy to find patterns, right? Uh, so you know, what's happening is I, I think that we reach this spot right here and that gives some people a, an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? It's time to clear out my balances, create, let this dip happen and then create some opportunities down here in order to set myself into a good position. But again, uh, looking over here, you can see we hit the cross right here and then immediately we're down, right? Uh, not over here. Let's let's skip the over here portion of it. This is back in 2015, but uh, this downward move right here, about 8%, almost immediately. Now, um, you might be asking yourself what happened here on August 15. I don't know the answer to that. I didn't go back to see what happened in, in the market in August 15, but we see this drastic sort of candle, right? And we saw the same thing that we saw uh, back in 2020. We saw that massive, there was a massive event right here that caused it to happen and the crossover was very muted, but then it came back around and then that got us on this run. Now, if we take that into consideration and we go from let's not even go from the bottom let's just go from where the cross happened um to where we ended over here that's a 74 percent pump off of whatever was going on at that moment and you can see right here that we still maintained going all the way up so now you got to ask yourself well how far did this end up going and when you start to zoom out you start to see the vastness of what this run kind of represented now are you starting to see the picture about what is going on when you get these crosses because now let's go look at it seven thousand five hundred and ninety three percent now uh you can say to yourself well that's a three-year run well yeah it's seven thousand five hundred ninety three percent over three years who else has given you a return like that other than bitcoin i mean let's think about it uh but uh, you don't have to do that uh you don't even have to worry about it because guess what your man believes I've already got the next one because this happens every single time. Folks, we're at Bitcoin being at, on this crossover, $5.58. We're at $5.58 when we see this crossover. And you can see right here that it goes from $5.74 all the way down to $3.81. That sounds like about a 60% dump. And well, let me rephrase that. It's about 40% dump because it's the difference. Very, the differential is 32%. So what do we see? We see the crossover. We see an immediate dump. And then what do we do? We get on this epic sort of run. Now, what's the percentage on this run? <laughs> We're going to do our Beavis and Butthead laugh right now because uh, 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 it, it's going to get kind of uh, it's going to get kind of crazy right here. Uh, We're going to do it from the cross here to up here. 24,472%. Now, you know, we're not going to see returns like that in, in this market as we are right now. I mean, anything can happen, but we're not going to see returns like that in this market. But what we are seeing is that this is always the case. This is what always happens. So let's go back over here and let's get kind of an idea. Like, what do we expect to happen over here? Well, the amount of drawdown that we've had from this announcement to here 
has been about 6%. So do we have some more downside? Well, economic factors and everything is different nowadays than it was way back when. So what we can probably expect and what we can probably see is that we're going to have some kind of drawdown. You can see over here that we did use this as resistance for a period of time. We don't really have a level of support here. Um, there is some along this way, but it's probably Bitcoin's going to be way more comfortable in this range. So we're, we're likely to see a breakdown in price action all the way down into this. Now, you remember, uh, if, if you're not familiar, there's a whole bunch of CME futures that are just sitting right in this range right now, which would mean that there's going to be a push. Now that we're close, there's going to be a push to get into that level uh, to get those things liquidated and... So this is where we are. This is what it looks like. Could there be another cross back over? And could we go back into the death cross? Yeah, of course we could. Uh, when you go look at the weekly, uh, you can see here on the weekly that we're probably uh, heading for that death cross on the weekly. And that's not a great sign, right? But um, this is going to be the first time when we go back, like we're going to say, oh, no, we don't want to see the death cross. Well, you know, fair enough. But guess what? Uh, we've never seen a death cross on the weekly anyway. So, you know, it. And this is going back a long way uh, worth of data, right? So um, we've never had a death cross. So uh, I don't think that the death cross over here on the weekly is going to matter as much. Uh, it should matter, but I don't think that it does uh, as much as the daily. We are on a long-term move. Now, we've got some more pain going. Um, and the question is what to expect. So in the next two to three months, uh, you're going to see earnings coming back around. And when you start to see the earnings come back around, they're not going to look as good as they were before. So that's going to cause uh, some run on stock prices and uh, drop drop the, the Dow Jones, going to drop the NASDAQ. That's probably going to affect Bitcoin negatively, uh, but that's going to be basically our clearings. Now, do we have uh, do we have it in us to reach these lows back here again in this 15,000 range? It's possible, but I, I. it's also possible that the bottom is already in. Uh, most of the signal indicators are telling us that the bottom has already been reached and that we're on the other side. Now, that doesn't mean that this can't be a different market than what we've seen every single time before. It doesn't mean that, right? Uh, so there, anything can happen, but um, we are still in a better position uh, in the overall economy. And look, investors are really... Uh, they're, they're feeling really, really, really bullish, even in bear markets right now, uh, especially after the lows that we've achieved. So um, did we feel desperation? Go ask yourself, did you feel despair when you thought maybe we're going to get this little rally over here? Uh, and, and, and I'm going to take you back in time just for one second. We're going to move on. Uh, August over here, the merge was happening with Ethereum. Everything was starting to pump a little bit. You're feeling good. You didn't like the fact that Ethereum was taking the lead for a little while. And then we started to move down. But then you felt this little swing. It was going back up and you could feel it happening. You, you were starting to get a smile on your face. It looked like the smile on the chart. And then FTX happens over here, right? And then you feel it come down and you realize it doesn't come down nearly as much as when Terra Luna or when when Elon sold his Bitcoin, uh, along with the collapse of Celsius and three arrows. You know, it all happens at one moment. Uh, and, and then you come down into this area. And then from November through the beginning of uh, 2023, uh, you're telling me that you didn't feel despair and, and capitulation. This was our desperate moment. So this really was uh, what I think is the bottom. And I think that there's probably, probably going to be a lot of support protecting that level and preventing us from going very much further than right here. I think that's where we are. I think that's, I think the bottom is in. Uh, I think we're probably uh, more close to getting into this golden pocket going through February and March until we get to April where we get the next earnings. You can see right here um, uh, on this chart, I'm going to show you this real quick. I think that we've got this move uh, that's coming. We got another leg coming to this little rally. Now I know it doesn't look like that right now. It doesn't feel like that right now, but this golden cross does not lie to you. It doesn't lie to you. It doesn't deceive you. It doesn't manipulate you. It always does what it always does. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, I, I, I Guys, I think we're going on a run. I think we got a little bit more uh, to go on this Staking, it's not that big a deal. I mean, it is a big deal, but it's not that big a deal when you look at the overall. The SEC is not necessarily coming for all of crypto. They just want centralized exchange to do the right thing. 
that's why they came after Kraken because Kraken wasn't doing the right thing. And listen, they were they were offering 20% APY in a bear market. That's insane. There, there's no possible way for you to, to continue to do that. That's um, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. And Kraken was the easiest one to attack. If you go after Coinbase, if you go after crypto.com, they got money. Uh, this was this they they took the easy road. Gary Gensler, look at his face. He's weak minded, he's weak willed. Uh, he goes after he's he's look. I, I'm pretty sure that when he's around his house, he scurries. I, I don't think that he walks. So um, that's just my opinion, of course. Uh, but anyway, so guys, I, and I don't want to talk about Gary Gensler, but uh, I just want to say that we're in a great position. All you have to do is have a little faith, understand this market is probably going to have moments, cycles, and we are probably on our way back up. This is not financial advice. My name is Blaze. I am always right. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will talk to you again very, very soon.